In this video, we're going to go over the continuity equation. The continuity equation is for a particular situation where you have an incompressible fluid moving through a pipe. Now, an incompressible fluid is one where the volume cannot change. So that means it can't get smaller, it can't get larger in volume. One of the results of this is, if your fluid is incompressible, then whatever amount of fluid that enters your pipe has to be the same amount of fluid that exits your pipe. So essentially the flow rate into the pipe is equal to the flow rate out of the pipe. We can actually expand this to say in general that the continuity equation says for an incompressible fluid moving through a pipe, the flow rate is the same at any point in the pipe. Okay. Now, there are some equations that we have to discuss. First of all, we need to know how to calculate the flow rate, which is given by this equation. So, the lowercase f, this stands for flow rate. A stands for the cross-sectional area of the pipe. And V stands for the flow speed and if you look at this equation, there are some terms that are pretty similar to each other. You have flow rate and flow speed, which do sound very similar to each other. So to better understand how this equation works, let's take a look at the units. So speed, we know has units of meters per second. Area, we know has units of meter squared. So if we're multiplying area with speed together, that means flow rate is gonna have units of meters cubed. And this actually helps to distinguish between what flow speed and flow rate is. Flow speed is essentially looking at how fast the individual fluid molecules are moving. So this would be the difference between a hose where the water is just blasting out, you know, very fast velocity, versus a hose where the water is just dribbling out, very low fluid speed. Now, if you look at flow rate, flow rate has units of meters cubed per second. So that means instead of describing the speed of individual fluid molecules, flow rate is talking about the volume of fluid that is moving per unit time. So what this means is you can actually have two pipes, one with a high flow speed and one with a low flow speed. So one, the water molecules are moving very fast, one, the water molecules are moving very slow, and the two can have the same flow rate. That would be possible if the pipe with very fast moving molecules has a very small cross-sectional area, and the one with uh, low flow speed, the molecules are moving slowly, has a large cross-sectional area. So that's the difference. Think of flow speed as how fast the molecules are moving, and flow rate as how many molecules, what volume of molecules is moving per second. Okay, so now that we understand how to calculate the flow rate, let's talk about the continuity equation. As we discussed, the continuity equation says that the flow rate at any point in a pipe is equal to the flow rate at any other point in a pipe. We can actually expand this with our flow rate equation to get A1V1 equals A2V2. This is the typical form of the continuity equation that we see, and this is an equation that's gonna be very helpful for solving a number of MCAT physics problems. So, as one application of how the continuity equation works, let's take a look at this example here. The question is, how does the flow speed of blood in the aorta compare with the flow speed of blood in a capillary? Okay. So this is tying a bit of biology here. So if we're thinking about the aorta and the capillary, the first thing we can compare is their cross-sectional area. So the cross-sectional area of an aorta versus the cross-sectional area of a capillary. Well, as you know, capillaries are super small, tiny blood vessels. So the cross-sectional area is gonna be much smaller than the aorta, since the aorta is a giant blood vessel from which all the blood is essentially being pumped out of to supply blood for the systemic circulation. So greater cross-sectional area. So now we wanna compare the flow speed of blood in the aorta versus the flow speed of blood in the capillary. Well, at first, if we think about the continuity equation, 
This continuity equation, the way that this is written, essentially tells us that the cross-sectional area is inversely related to the flow speed. All right, that uh, if the flow rate is the same at both points, if you have a greater cross-sectional area, that must have a lower flow speed. So at first, you might look at this and be like, hmm, since the aorta has a greater cross-sectional area than the capillary, then it must have a lower flow speed. But if you think about what you've learned in biology, that wouldn't make sense because the aorta is where blood has just been pumped with the most force right out of the heart. So the flow speed of blood is actually greater than the flow speed of the capillary as well. And now you might actually be thinking, well, in this case, is this a violation of the continuity equation? Does the continuity equation not hold in this situation? And it does hold, but there's something that we're missing here. So if you also recall from biology, your aorta is going to branch into arteries. Arteries are going to branch to arterioles, and arterioles are going to branch to form capillaries. All right? And when you have a system where a pipe is going to branch into multiple pathways, such as this, so let's just go ahead and say that we have a pipe with three branches. And if you have some amount of fluid flow entering the pipe, so let's call this F1, flow rate entering the pipe, then the fluid can exit through three different paths, and each of these will have their own flow rates, F2, F3, F4. Now, you cannot say that the flow rate at point one is equal to the flow rate at point two. That's not correct, right? The amount of fluid entering the pipe is not equal to the amount of fluid exiting in just one of the branches. What you can say, though, is that the fluid flow entering the pipe, F1, is equal to the sum of the flow rates at all of the exits. And when you use this application, then continuity still holds. If the cross-sectional area at point one is less than the sum of the cross-sectional areas exiting, then you're going to have greater flow speed at point one than at the other branches. Okay, so going back to this situation, an aorta does not go to a single capillary. An aorta forms a ton, a huge number of capillaries. So if we want to apply the continuity equation properly, we shouldn't be comparing aorta with a single capillary. We actually want to compare the cross-sectional area of the aorta to the cross-sectional area of all the capillaries within your body. And indeed, when you add up the cross-sectional area of all the capillaries within your body, it does have a total area that is larger than that of the cross-sectional area of the aorta. So when you keep these two together, then it makes sense that the flow speed of blood is slower in the capillaries than the aorta because the cross-sectional area in the, in the capillaries is greater than the aorta. So the continuity equation holds.